Okay, so welcome back. Um, where we are at the moment is we have a whole bunch of objects. We're drawing them to the screen. However, the way we're doing that is not so great. I mean, the good thing about it is we can use it in our record draw function and it makes sense. Let me just get to this function. Yeah, in record draw commands, I mean, how would you draw things? Normally you would loop through the objects um, and send that off to the shader somehow, usually as a uniform in OpenGL. Um, but if we really look at this, what we're doing is we're, we're running around doing all these extra function calls. It's far more efficient just to get all of the data that we're going to use to draw at the positions, send that over all at once before drawing the frame. And then when we draw the frame, refer to that data, which has been sent over in one go. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Instead of using push constants, we are going to use an extra descriptor to um, send a storage buffer with all the positions. So let's go over to the frame. And for the uniform, we used a struct, but I reckon for the, um, what am I thinking? For the um, storage buffer, we can just use a, a standard vector. So just going with the same convention that we have up above, let's go, okay, we'll make a vector, a four by four matrices, call this uh, model transforms. And then we're going to also need to write that to a buffer. So we'll make one of those. And then we're also going to need to write to that buffer. So we'll map it and keep that around. Model buffer right location. <clears throat> okay, cool. So let's go down to the make UBO resources. Mm. Actually, I changed my mind. Um, let's go to the shader for now. So I'll just go to the shader and let's declare this um, binding so that we can use it. Okay, so um, before we were using push constants down here and that instance was called object data. So we accessed it and said, hey, object data, what's the, the model matrix you've got there? Instead of that, we've now got another descriptor. Now this is at binding index one, as opposed to binding index zero for the uniform buffer. It's just an array of uh, mat fours. Um, yeah, read only buffer. Um, this STD 140 enforces that um, the layout, the memory layout here on the graphics card is the same as in C++. And yeah, that instance is called object data. So what we can do is we can say, hey, um, grab the object data's model matrix based on the um, instance and the variable for that in original OpenGL, it would be instance ID. However, in the Vulkan incantation, that's changed to instance index. And I believe that just, it's just a rename. It reflects the fact that the instance can actually be more dynamic than just an ID. It's not a fixed thing. You can always set a start and a stop value and things. Anyway, I'm rambling. So now, what we can do is we can just go back. Where are we? Grab those shaders, get rid of those. Recompile. That comes through just, just fine. Okay, cool. So now let's modify our descriptor set layout. So we'll go to the engine somewhere. Uh, not here, not here. Just take a second. Here we go. Okay, so let's modify this. So now we're going to have two descriptors bound to this set. 
because the storage buffer is something that we're just setting once at the top of the frame before we render, it's being used with the same frequency as the uniform buffer. And for that reason, they can be bound to the same set. It's common to bind um, descriptors into descriptor sets on the basis of how frequently they're used. So, um, yep, this will be, um, yep, binding one, and this will be type storage buffer. Um, yep, one still, and that will be used in the vertex shader. Okay, cool. So that should be set. So later on when we make textures in the next video, um, I'll be making a different descriptor set for the texture because it's bound more frequently. So then we go back to, I guess the pipeline, right? Because we're looking at this. Yeah, this pipeline layout. So now we're actually not gonna have push constants anymore. So we can get rid of this part. And I guess, not super general, but we can also get rid of that function. I mean, we're not calling it. That's a great idea. Get rid of functions when you're not calling them. But anyway, um, that's big because, I mean, what's, what's the point? It's, it's such a specific function. It's something I just write for a specific purpose. Anyway, so <laughs> just double checking that. Yep, I think that's fine. Okay, so now we can go back to the frame and start creating this stuff. So I'm gonna rename this to just um, create descriptor resources. Um, there are several ways we could go about this. We could take a pointer to the scene so that we know exactly how many um, model matrices we need, but I mean, we don't need to. Here's another way we can do it. We can just um, allocate space for a whole bunch of things. So um, if we look at this, um, logical device doesn't need to change. Memory properties, it's still gonna be the same. It's still something I can write to from the CPU. Physical device doesn't change. Um, this part changes. So I'm gonna allocate space for 1024. For some reason, I like that number. Um, model matrices, so we'll go um, size of mat4. So we've got space for 1024 of those. I'm going to use it as a storage buffer. And I'm going to write that into the... Okay, and then similarly, um, I'll have model buffer right location we get by mapping to the memory, whoops, and we use the same size. Okay, now I'm just going to also pre-allocate a bunch of these. So I'll get my model transforms and reserve space for 1024 elements so that it's not resizing it as I push these on loop through and create those. Okay, so for, for whatever reason, um, if we need it, we've got an identity matrix there at every position anyway. Okay, cool. So that's all well and good. Um, now I'm going to create a descriptor so I've got this one. I'm going to create another one. And then I'll populate the info down below. Okay, cool. So pretty self-explanatory. It refers to the model buffer has an offset of zero and size of the full buffer. Okay, so of course it's a good idea to make sure that we are freeing these resources so we can go back to the engines cleanup function 
into the cleanup swap chain and then grab these three functions and call them. So we're going to unmap our model buffer and then free it and then destroy the buffer. It's probably a good idea if we see there's an error here. Um, if we go to, where is it? Make frame resources, just change this function name. There we go. Okay, now um, we've got this other function, prepare frame, and I wanna set this up so that it also grabs all of the, um, the data of the positions from the scene. So we're going to need to take a pointer to the scene as part of the frame preparation. So we'll just head back to the header, update that. Pass in that scene pointer, and then we should be good to go. So we're gonna modify this a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is this is, where are we? Down below. This is a little bit ugly how we keep accessing into this. So what we can do is um, access once at the start. There we go. And make sure we're taking a reference to that so that we're not doing a copy construction, which could take a bit more time. Um, so just quickly look through here and everywhere we see this swap chain frames image index, we can swap that out with frame. So hopefully you can see this becomes a lot cleaner and performs better as well. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to look through all of the objects in the scene and remember the order of drawing. So if we go down to record draw commands in these loops, we can see that first of all, we're doing the triangles and then we're doing the squares and then the stars. So I'll just head back. Now note that I'm using a reference here as well for the same reason as before. I don't want to do a, a copy constructor, um, but yeah, I'm just looping through all the triangle positions. So what I do is I say, okay, uh, frame model transforms. Um, so this will set it at position zero and then increment I and just keep going. So we'll go, okay, uh, GLM translate okay so we've got that that will set all of the matrices ready for the triangles to accept they'll be in the right position and then we'll just keep doing this so we'll do the triangles and then the squares and then the stars and it's pretty much the same code. All we need to do then is copy to that memory. So we'll go, okay, get the model buffer right location. We'll send in the, if we go to the frame, model transforms and then data, send that in. And then all we need to do is take I, which is the number of um, matrices which were written, and then, okay. So we're telling them exactly how many model matrices were written, and that makes this a little bit faster. But yeah, okay, so um, that should now be good to go. But um, last of all, we tell the frame to write its descriptor set, which we should go and um, define that. So if we go to write descriptor set, we have this um, write info, and we can go ahead and do this again. So 
very imaginative. Okay, so writing to the descriptor set, uh, binding one this time. Um, this is all the same. We're writing a storage buffer and we're writing the, um, the model buffer descriptor. Okay, fingers crossed. Um, now let's go back to the engine. So at this point, we should have all of these descriptors written to the descriptor set and that descriptor set should be bound. But we've got the problem that we are still not using, not really using instance rendering and we're still trying to do uh, push constants. So we just go down to record draw command and this should be pretty straightforward to uh, fix up. Okay, so let's just go through this super quickly. We begin the render pass or we begin the command buffer, then begin the render pass, clear the screen, bind the pipeline, bind the descriptor sets. So now we should have all the resources available to us, prepare the scene. And really that just binds the, the mesh, a vertex menagerie, which has all of our individual meshes in there. And now let's go in here. So we'll say, alrighty, um, Let's play around with instances. So we'll, we'll have to have a start value. We'll start that at zero and we'll need to know how many instances we're gonna draw, how many um, triangles we're gonna draw. Well, that's okay. What we can do is just take the, the scenes triangle positions, get its size and probably, yeah, cast that. Okay, now we can get rid of all of this loop. This is the only part that we need. Everything has been written for us. We just need to say, okay, we are going to draw this many instances and we're going to start at this instance. So if you haven't done instance rendering before, this is essentially saying, hey, draw this and do it in a loop and do it this many times and have a local variable starting at zero and each time increment it. Okay, so what we then need to do is take the, the start instance and increment it by the number of things that we just drew so it's ready to draw the next one. Okay, so we can actually get rid of both of these loops. We don't need them. And now let's take these lines and copy them again. Okay, so again, uh, we don't need to redefine it. We're just resetting its value. So we say, alrighty, how many squares do we have? So go ahead and run the same um, thing again. And then how many um, stars do we have? And then go ahead and run that again. So this code is becoming very nice, very clean. Um, let's give this a shot, see what happens. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. Nope, there we have it. Okay, so we can see, yeah, we've got our things drawing. It looks the same as before. The performance is better. Um, and that's due to the fact that we're doing fewer draw calls and not messing around with our push constants. And when we go ahead and do this in Python, it'll be a lot better. Anyway, so yeah, that'll be it for now. Um, just quickly, as we can see, yep, no errors. Yeah, everything's all working. So in the next video, we are going to be doing textures. Anyway, really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye.